Good morning. Happy Cinco de Mayo. <clears throat> I will wait a minute till everybody comes on. <clears throat> it's May 5th already. Isn't that crazy? I knit napper. Do you knit a lot? I love to knit. Lyndon. Mama Prescott. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Irma. Ivana. Hello. Hi, Gail. Oh my gosh, you're coming on quick here. Hi, Allie. <laughs> um, yeah, happy Cinco de Mayo. Hi, Diane. I think there's probably a margarita in my future today. <laughs> if I get a lot done. Hi, Sheila. I'm glad you always remind me that you're Sheila. <clears throat> Hi, Jane. How is everyone? Good morning, Anita. It's good to see you all. I do love my Wednesday mornings. <clears throat> so today I'm going to paint. Yeah, why don't, I was thinking about that. Why doesn't everybody in the beginning just pop in and give your name and where you're from? My, I started a painting. So I had to do a, um, stopped in New Jersey. I go there sometimes. I go to New Hope a lot. Um, Mexican eggs. Yeah, that's what I need to do, right? Yes. Ellen, I need to do Mexican eggs. No, I'm egged out. I'm egged out. I think at the end of doing our Pisanki egg, and I did my demo on Friday for the Inspiring Art Group, and then we had a party on Saturday and had eggs, and it was mostly just family and close friends, and then we had um, a Ukrainian Easter dinner. Ukrainian? I guess that's Orthodox, I guess it is, for my mother-in-law, and... Um, now I remember why I stopped doing it egg day a few years ago. It's exhausting. It's hard having a lot of people at your house for a whole weekend. Of, uh, I think it's more the exhaustion of cleaning up and setting up that's the hardest part. So, Oh, the eggs. Yeah, they're so much fun. They are very much fun. So I started a painting. I didn't get too far on it, but I did a, a live painting for um, the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show. They're doing a virtual show this year. So they do a thing called a 5 o'clock club, and I did it last Thursday I think and I didn't think this big white thing behind me and this keeps calling to me like I want to work on it and I just didn't have a chance so I just kind of dove in and and got a good base so maybe this weekend I'll get a chance to work on it but my son settles on his house in Baltimore and I don't know if we'll be going down there at all this weekend or if my husband will go and I'll stay home not sure but good morning Emily so how is everybody? Okay, so today we're going to paint an iris, and um, the the um, photo came from my friend Ellen. Yes, Ellen, there she is, Ellen Lowe Taylor. I um, love when people send me photos to paint from because um, I feel like sometimes I spend so much time in at the computer. Really, I spend more time at my computer than I do anywhere else doing work um but I'd rather spend more time outside finding inspiration and in my studio painting but we'll get there right we will get there so I'm kind of organized look I have hey Donna hey Bonnie look I all new fresh paints out I got here a little bit early this morning and got this all done all, all cleaned up I love a fresh start and here is my little lights shining there Put that toward the ceiling or something. All right, so fun. Okay, so here we go. I need a little sip of my coffee. My fat cow coffee. Ellen, I just ordered Ethiopian this morning. I was just about out, and you and Martha both suggested it, so that's what I ordered. I know all organized. It really does feel fabulous to be organized. It's not a feeling I have very often. I'm not very good at it, but I love when it happens. So Ellen sent me several um, beautiful um, photos to choose from. So it was hard choosing, but it's not like I can only do one, right? Thank you, Ellen. Here. 
So what's new, everyone? Anything new and fun going on besides Cinco de Mayo? Who's having a margarita at some point today? I certainly will. It would be more fun if it was on a Friday, but a uh, whatever day this is, Wednesday will do. How could I forget what day it is, right? So I've had a busy art week too. I've had to drop um, paintings off at Square Pair Gallery at Kennett Square on Monday for a show that they're doing. They're doing, um, of course, May Flowers and love being part of that. And I have to go pick up artwork because there was a big sale at our gallery here in Lancaster called Red Raven. And they did a From the Vault sale and they had all the local artists contribute paintings that kind of they've been have had around and do them at a deeply discounted price. So I don't know if I sold any or not, but I'll find out today because I have to go do a pickup. I thought that was a really fun idea. <clears throat> Let me get a little yellow in there. It's already fun, isn't it? I paint birds. That's a great name. I love painting birds. I think it was like National Bird Day or something. When, uh, maybe on Tuesday. I didn't get to celebrate. I was going to paint a bird and then I had, oh, it must have been Monday because I had to go to Square Pair and do all the things. And I have a lot of commissions that I'm working on. So I did that. My intention was to do a commission and then do a painting the same day, but Usually I can't really fit that in. Hello to North South Carolina. Is it beautiful and warm there? I bet it is. We've had really nice warm weather, but I think it's it's gonna be a little bit a oh, birthday yesterday. And I didn't even celebrate. Thanks for that. Yeah, I know. I saw it come up like, hi Ellen, how are you? Are you still away with family? Hello to the Philippines. Oh, my, my son's girlfriend's family is Filipino. I want to come there to visit someday. It looks absolutely gorgeous. I always see their pictures when they go there. And I said, next time I'm coming along to the Philippines. It's on my list. In Georgia today. Oh, Alan, aren't you lucky? I'm sure you're having an amazing time. And you're still tuning in here, which is thank you. <laughs> I feel honored that you're tuning in to watch me paint on your, on your vacation. And I have to think about what I'm doing here. I'm kind of getting lost in the details, aren't I? Texas, Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, I love your art. It's inspiring. Oh, thank you. It is. It brings me a lot of joy. It sure is fun. that leaf in maybe I'll just have it come a little more over this way the background is neutral I think I like the neutral and I think I like the shadows and I've been liking brown I used to just not be a fan of brown I don't know what it was I had a, a thing but I'm embracing brown so let's go with brown here sometimes I would change that whole background color but the being getting better at embracing neutral colors like browns and soft, quiet colors really helps your colors pop, actually. Tehran, Iran. Oh, is it watercolor? No, it is oil. But I use medium in this base layer, so it kind of has a feel of watercolor. It's totally oil paint. Rich, buttery oil paint. Whoops. All right. <clears throat> I guess since I have that 
I'm going to put yellow back there, I guess. Kathy, I use a medium called Zest It. It's just, it's clear painting medium. It's a mix of, um, oh my gosh, what is it? It's a mix of linseed oil and like a terpenoid. Favorite medium and surface, please. Yeah, that was my favorite medium. You could just mix um, uh, terpen, terpenoid and linseed oil if you want to, but I am just, I just like having it come in one thing. Hi, Henriette, how are you? <clears throat> And my favorite painting surface, either canvas or ampersand gesso board, or I'm painting right now on Arches oil paper. It's been my current obsession right now. I love painting on the oil paper because it is so, um, it really has that feel of watercolor in the background. Oh, yes, I can show you the bottle again. If you ever ask me questions and I miss them, you can just ask again because sometimes it's hard to read all the things at the same time as painting. Depends how much how involved I am in my thought. Let's see what else is there that kind of looks gray? I think I'm gonna let that be my base layer. Nice and messy. I love, love that bit layer being very loose and watercolor looking. Because who doesn't love watercolor? Watercolor was my very, my first love. I was just watching an artist paint with, um, I forget who it was. I love watching, learning from other artists. Like, I feel like I'm only at, <clears throat> you know, like maybe 12% of all the things I want to learn about painting but I was watching someone paint with gouache and I used to um, paint with gouache a lot in college <clears throat> so now I feel like I need to go buy some gouache gosh I don't have any dark purples in my in my uh, whatever these things are called pigment sticks I wonder if I do. I always kind of use these same exact colors in every painting. But I might have a purple, <coughs> but I can't think of one. I don't even know that they really make a purple. I'm not sure. Not worth looking right now. You guys don't want to wait for me to be digging in my bin of RNF pigment sticks, right? I always like to put a little bit of this in my painting, even though it's not always in there for real. Yes, these are called RNF pigment sticks. I really don't need them too much in this painting. It's kind of an off color for what I'm doing. <clears throat> My favorite uh, pigment stick colors are, um, I'd say Malachite Green. And I love this, um, gosh, I don't even know what this is called. Let me pull another one out. Look, my, I don't have the end on any of them. Oh, here it is. Phthalo Green Extra Pale is a favorite. And I love the Provence Blue. This color is really pretty. And I use a lot of this Quinacridone Magenta. A little bit in there for fun. So I do love unexpected colors peeking through. Um, I think that's a good start. Provence blue, yeah. Valley green, Malachi green, yes. Hi, Mary. Okay. Oh, did I say this? I love this, too. The, this is uh, iridescent gold. This is an absolute favorite of mine. Whoops, now I have my paintbrushes rolling in my paint. Let me clean it off. And turn you down here. The aqua pigment stick. Um... This, uh, you mean this one? This one. This is Thalo Green Extra Pale, and this is Malachite Green. This is the kind of a light version of that color. And the iridescent gold together. Yeah, my faves. I have this. I have an entire bin of them here. I don't know how I got these great big gold ones. They'd be fun on a big painting, but 
whenever I want something, I can go in there and dig for it. But but these are my go-tos. I always have them sitting right here. All right, let me bring you over here in my little... To mix some colors. Yeah, my light's set up a little bit better. I need a sip of my coffee. Okay. Love color mixing. It's so much fun. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so I need kind of a neutral color for the backgrounds. Let me do that first. Oops, let me say here. <clears throat> That's, uh, I see pink chips. Oh, Bonnie, I'm working on commissions for someone and that's colors that they have in their house. I don't need to make them necessarily totally match their house, but I like to have like inspiration like that. So I kind of feel confident that I'm doing something that's in a color scheme that, that they like and everything. So that's what, what that is. It's kind of my current inspiration for that. Mixing up some colors. And that's nice because, like, I have some yellow in there, and that's a complement of the purples that are in the in the flower. I'm kind of making my background and shadow areas more warms, and then I'm going to make my highlights cool. <clears throat> Good morning to North Carolina. Where in North Carolina, Megan? personally prefer using oil and not acrylic. <coughs> um, I would say I'm more comfortable with oil right now, but I do enjoy acrylic too. I've been having a lot of fun <clears throat> kind of doing acrylic abstracts and some acrylic florals that I've been loving. So I would say I'm most comfortable with oils, but <clears throat> acrylics are fun too and it's nice to mix things up too like to not be doing the same thing all the time for me personally anyway because if I go and experiment with acrylics then I bring something from what I learned in that journey back into my oil painting and it just kind of goes round and round <clears throat> yeah I just did a floral acrylic that I love I think oil paint easier to work with and you can modify it when you feel like it yeah, I guess so. I sort of feel like it goes both ways because with an oil painting, it's, I would say, well, painting with oils is like painting with butter and painting with acrylics is like painting with plastic. So it's nice to be able to put something down and it dries right away. And then if you don't like it, you can totally go over it. Whereas with oil painting, after a while, you can't do that because it's going to get, um, it gets, it's more, unforgiving I guess I'd say um what am I thinking like you can't like you can you you're when you paint with oils because they don't dry for a long time you can get to mud very quickly like you have to be a little more decisive in what you're doing how long do your oil paintings on art take to dry and do you varnish them Mary said um they take about the same amount of time that they would take to dry normally. I like to give them like a month to dry, at least. And I do varnish them. I've been spray varnishing them. I also wanna play with um, liquid varnish, but haven't done that yet. And I've played with a few different ways of framing them that I'm really liking too. Um, <clears throat> that I need to add to my, I have like a framing guide on my website and I wanna add to that, my, the framing of the of these. Boy, that's a fun stretch of color, isn't it? <clears throat> um, so I need a little bit more of a blue purple. Here's a little bit of this. 
That's nice too. Love purples. I hear our irises. I was talking to my husband yesterday and I told him that I was going to paint Ellen's irises. And he said, do you know you have irises in the backyard? And I was like, no, I don't get out much. I'll have to go look. The yellow. This yellow, do you mean? I'm going to clean this off so I don't get it dirty. I know I need it. They are pretty, aren't they? Can you show us what type of varnish, spray varnish? Um, I don't think it's here. I think I have it um, by my back door. <laughs> I varnished. Now wait, I can look. I'll look in my cupboard and see if I have one in the cupboard. It's too funny. That's something I don't do in my studio. Let me see if I can <clears throat> find it. It might only be upstairs. It's. I think it's called... Oh, here. I do have it. new can of it yay this is the spray varnish that i like blair gloss spray bar it's very very nice i've been using that for a long long time <clears throat> oh susie you're welcome it's my pleasure it sure is fun Saturate this a little bit with colors pop. Yep, I agree. It is. It's it's the best. We had breakfast already. Have to clean your. Do you put them <clears throat> brush up or brush down? I lay them flat, Corinne. I lay them like on a on a washcloth <coughs> to dry. doing here. I want like kind of a, a warm grayish. This is not looking gray. Kind of in my shadow areas. <clears throat> I I a little blue and yellow in there. When you try to mix up some colors, you really have to take your time, not put too much in or it sends it in the wrong direction too quickly. Very purple. I, I'm going to try that. <clears throat> I don't want lemon yellow. I think I want a warm yellow. Let me look here for something. Too many colors in my jar here to find what I'm looking for. Uh, what's this? Cadmium. No, that's lemon. I don't want lemon. I don't want lemon. I want, I want just Naples yellow light. That might help me. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little bit of Naples yellow light down here. Add that in. I want it. I want to desaturate my purple a little bit. It's a little too purple. And it's totally purple. I want it to be more gray. I may have put a little red in it. And then of course, that made it more purple. 
sometimes the color mixing is not as easy. Sometimes it comes easily and sometimes you have to work out a little bit. Do a little more of that yellow. Probably actually need orange, but I'm not gonna find that in my bin. Or maybe a little bit of black. Maybe let's put green in there. Maybe that'll gray it up a little bit. Little, that helped a little. Mm, let me see, I'm gonna go a little lighter. That's better, okay, that's what I needed. I like that much more. Make that a little lighter, and I think we're good. yellow you think Donna you still think more yellow you think it's okay let me see I think that needs a smidge more blue mm, just a smidge more blue all right I think that's a good start Oh, uh, Martha, I was trying to mix kind of a neutral grayish desaturated color for <clears throat> some of the shadow areas. No, wait, let me get, I want to knock my coffee over. <clears throat> I almost just did. <clears throat> kind of for in some of these shadow areas. Let's see how I did. I can always go back and try again if they don't work. All right, does that look good? It's pretty close. Need a little coffee. Okay, <clears throat> I'll start with my big brush. No, I'm going to go a little smaller today. <clears throat> I'm usually going and do my darker colors. Live base painting. See, I like the base paintings too. And I always say it looks like sheets or something. Like, I would love them to be, yeah, licensed to be in sheets because they're, very fun. I think I had sheets. I my when I was a little girl, <coughs> my mother <coughs> would change out my sheets like in the summer, like I had summer bedding and curtains and then in the winter she would change them out for the winter stuff cuz it, it actually covered the windows more and made that room warmer. But she was um, a seamstress, so she made my curtains and everything. So it was really nice to have that. And some of these purples really remind me. I think my room was purple when I was young and purple bedding. And I just thought it was the coolest, coolest room. Fond memories. I'm not a mom like that. I don't change out the curtains and the bedding every season. Oh my gosh, could you even imagine? <clears throat> it does go with the two paint chips. I think too, like the um, person who commissioned me to work on these paintings, like she loves my color palette. So they probably all would have worked even without having her colors for inspiration, but they're just fun to look at right there, aren't they? And, I, and my dad was a painter and a wallpaper hanger, so of course I love wallpaper. Kind of excited that it's back in style. <clears throat> Those all ebb and flow, the style of things. <clears throat> when we first moved into our house, I think we moved in here maybe 27 years ago. And we put wallpaper in the whole, the whole house was wallpapered because my dad was a wallpaper hanger. So we had that resource and we had wallpaper in every room. And then over time, wallpaper went out of style and... We uh, took it down, and we have every room painted now. And now I feel like we could go back to wallpapering all of it again, which would be fine with me. Big project, though. <clears throat> I 
I did purple bedding for my daughter too. Oh, did you, Anita? Love that. Yeah, purple and big flowers. You know, and we never took pictures of things, so I don't have any pictures of what any of that looked like. It's only what I have in my memory, which is not a lot. <clears throat> you guys can't hear it. Can you hear my radio? I always worry about that. <clears throat> and I should just paint without it on, but I have a hard time. It's crazy. I like to have music on, even if I can barely hear it. But we always have music on in our house. Like, quiet is really loud to me. And I know I'm talking to you guys, but... If you're here, it'd be easier. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, <coughs> Susie. <clears throat> so I'm doing my darker areas. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> Ellen always lets me know. <clears throat> so my Art and Bloom course starts tomorrow, so I've got to get everything ready today for that, too. Like the email reminder to let people know and things like that. It's always a lot to think about. It seems like since I already did it once that I would kind of be on the ball with it. But it's almost like starting everything over again. It's crazy. Of course, I'm not the most organized person in the world either. Always working on that, but <clears throat> that doesn't seem to be happening. Random organization starts. Nope. I always hope for it. <clears throat> I'm a little hot this morning. We didn't turn our air on yet either. Did anybody turn your air conditioning on? It is actually warm here, but I don't like turning on the air until it's going to stay consistent. Like, I think we're going to have um, kind of cooler weather still like this week oh good I paint birds good I'm glad you're joining us me too so yeah that'll be on my list today to work on getting that ready to go overwork that background I think I'm good let me just put a little bit of this color in and then go back to the flower. <clears throat> Karen, it was beautiful here yesterday. It was like 80 degrees, I think. <clears throat> but today, I think it's going to be in the 70s. Which isn't bad. That's fine. It's way better than being cold. All right, I think that's a good start. <clears throat> Neither am I I think being, I don't know what might come with being creative. I think so, Mar Marion, my gosh. I wish. I wish I was organized. I always try to be organized, and it just never happens for me. But I will continue to try. And if, like, even if someone organizes everything for me, like my daughter will do that sometimes, I stay organized like for a couple of weeks and then it all falls apart because I get too caught up in something and then I forget to stay on top of it and then it's so hard to get back. <clears throat> Crazy. light in there and see what this looks like. Now, oh, Karen, do you still have snow? 
parents in Canada. Spend more time trying to get organized than painting. <laughs> there you do. Yeah, I guess that's good. Then you must be organized. I certainly don't. I spend more time painting than organizing. Even though this morning I was pretty good. You saw my palette was all set up, so I'm happy with that. It's good for me. Tulips and leaves are popping. Oh, good. Yeah, you have cold weather longer, much longer in Canada, don't you? I was only ever there once. My son rode in the Canadian Henley. I think it was called it was a a rowing thing and I can't remember where it was it wasn't too far from um the waterfalls I can't even remember what they're called right now I can't believe your irises are already in bloom the buds on our trees are just starting to pop yeah macro organizing what is that that's like the bigger picture organizing. Yeah, I'm sure I've told you the story on here that, that like my idea of, orga I organize by color and size, which doesn't work for most things that are logical. And my sister um, was here one time and she wanted a like an old cross country pattern, cross stitch pattern that I had done um, at Christmas time of these Santa Clauses and she asked me for the pattern and she said I'm sure you have it somewhere and I was like yeah I'm sure I do so we were looking for it and I couldn't find it anywhere but I figured it was like in my where I keep all my papers in my filing cabinet thing couldn't find it couldn't find it and then I finally said to her I said well I think it was a bigger sheet of paper it wasn't it wasn't eight and a half by eleven or smaller I said let me look what my tax returns and sure enough, that's where I filed it because it fit there. <clears throat> I guess the good thing is I figured that out, but <laughs> it really isn't very logical. <laughs> Can any of you relate? Would you file something like that with your tax returns? Red, red bud. Oh, I have a red bud too. I love my red bud. Yep, mine is too. We were, um, my little friend Emerson was here last night. We were um, watching her because her parents were celebrating their anniversary and and had gone out to dinner. And so Emerson and I were doing sidewalk chalk on the sidewalk last night and all the little red bud pieces were on the ground. And she was like, what are all of these? She loved them. They're so pretty. So, so pretty. So this flower is so complicated, it's kind of hard to dance around and find all the little areas, but it's not hard. It's actually really fun. I always do stuff like that and organize and then forget where I logically, but yes, that's exactly what I do. Like, I don't understand where, like, where it would go. I can even think, where would my husband put this? But then I'll put it there, and then I can't remember what I did with it. <clears throat> butterfly clutter, <laughs> butterfly clutter bugs. Yes, <laughs> homes for the same item. Yeah. Well, Amy, my trick is just to buy more than I need of everything. Like you know, my favorite things, like my rulers, like two of those. Like every so, if I put one somewhere, I have another one close by. My palette knives, right? I have multiples of everything, and so if I'm looking for something, odds are there's one nearby. Otherwise, I'll never find it. But then that make, that's what makes us cluttered, I guess, too. I'm trying to put several craft ideas in a studio and basement. Ugh, <laughs> several areas. Oh, that's what I have, Pam. I have areas did I show you my ears I mean it, honestly it's a mess but I'll show you so like like here's where I paint and then I have something I'm working on from my inspiring art collective <clears throat> and then over here is my where I do watercolors and acrylics and then here's where I have a lot of my tools 
So I have two completely different areas. And, and if I had a bigger space, I'd probably just have 10 areas that I'd be working in instead of two, which would not be good. And it's tricky. Like when I work on that big painting that's behind me here, clutter bug me. What clutter bug are you test? Oh, Ellen, you have to send that to me. I'd love to do that. That sounds like fun. I'm definitely a clutter bug. Such a beautiful, oh, thank you, Ellen. Ellen already sent that to me. Thank you. Lighten that a little bit. <clears throat> I just realized it's raining too. It's not very good for Cinco de Mayo, is it? a paintbrush dance around to get all those little areas. <clears throat> Oops, it's too light. <clears throat> My little stem looks a little, if you use it, it is, oh, is that, is that how that works, Laura? <laughs> if you use it, it's not clutter. Oh, I like that. I should tell my husband that one because I do use all of it. <clears throat> Butterflies. Oh, Ellen's telling me I'm a butterfly. I like that. I like to be a little butterfly. No, is it looking like it? Is it getting too, too, that's what I always say. Is it too what? Too what? <laughs> I never know what, what it's too, but I know it's too something. Too light. I kind of like this watercolory stuff showing through, so I might leave that there. <clears throat> You could still drink margaritas in the rain. That's right, Anita. Yes, you can. That's a good point. That's looking on the bright side. It's a little floof up in there. Sherilyn, Texas, it takes the shame and the blame away when you know that you simply have a different style. Yes. Yeah, Henrietta, I'm using this as the eight rosemary flat. I generally like to use a larger brush, but there's so many little details in this that I'm using the smaller one. that pushing back enough I think so you 
Yeah, I like the flat ones too. I always want to experiment with other brushes too, but I am really just, I love these. Um, I just am having trouble. I mean, I have tried. I actually used, I got some new large brushes. I needed very big large ones of the same style for my large paintings. And I did get them and play with them. But boy, are they hard to clean. Oh my gosh. When you do a brush like this, here's the one I was using this size. And this is my usual brush. I like to clean this. Like it still doesn't even, there's, you can still see that there's paint in there. It just takes forever. Or just imagine cleaning this one. This took forever too, but what a fun brush. And think how much paint goes in here to like make enough paint to make a nice stroke. <clears throat> it's a whole different investment too to do a large painting. You really have to like <laughs> not think about how much money you're spending. Hi, Mary Jo. How are you? <clears throat> How did I do that? Leaf, I don't think I did mixed any greens, did I? <clears throat> Ellen says, I started one of the iris last night, got overwhelmed with the details. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> I'm, a, I'm feeling a little bit like that too. It is, it's a lot of details. And I don't want to overwork it, but I want it to be enough that it pulls together. Um, and I don't think I'm quite there yet. But yes, it's a lot of colors. It's a lot of blues. And I don't. I like to have a right amount of detail and not too much detail, but it's a fine line to dance. But it's just like anything else. It's carving it out and looking at it. And I have to say it helps me to look in the phone to look at what you're looking at to see what I need to bring forward and push back. Whereas when you're just straight on looking at it, at the painting, it's hard to decipher. So that could be a trick that you could do, Ellen, if you're going to work on it again today. Did you choose the same one? Or did you do a different one? forward a little bit magic <laughs> magic like it is kind of magic Ellen I think it's to getting your mind out of it and just doing it and not thinking too hard about it which is really a trick but I think it does help you can't be too think about it too much I always say it's good to learn all the things you need to learn and then kind of forget them when you dive into painting Yellow is too bright in there. Shattery color. Different photo. Yeah, I had, I like this one too. This one, I did that too. I don't know which one would have been easier. That's what I couldn't, I decided that this morning. I always say I always decide what I'm going to paint in the morning see what speaks to me the most oh good martha i'm glad you're joining us have you always been able to see like an artist or acquired the skill over time well i don't i don't ever remember not being an artist so i probably probably both i think i've always been an artist but i think anyone can learn to see that way like i even find that my family because i always point things out now they notice things that they never would have noticed but I'll point things out and then they'll point things out to me, which I love that. So I think it's both learned and probably natural, a little bit of both. It's just about observing, I think. 
like I was with my husband the other day somewhere and and the light changed like we we're just sitting at a table and I said oh the light just changed and and it just got warm. the light got really warm and beautiful and I said did you see that and he said yes it's like wow I love that I'm like I saw that <clears throat> that's because I always notice it and point it out I think What's going on right there? I think that's okay, though. I like that little... What do you think, guys? Where are we at 8.51? We're okay. We are okay. All right, so I still think this yellow is too dominant. Let's see if we can throw that back a little bit. No, I think I did it too much. That pushed it back a little more. Um, and this. Did that push that in enough? Oh, hi, Sue. It, uh, the app I use on my iPad is called um, Hashtag Grid. It looks like, where is it? It looks like this that little icon, the G. It's either Grid Hashtag or Hashtag Grid. So I'm close to finished. Let me see. I have to look a little bit more. Oh, Anita. Okay, thank you. <coughs> finished I don't even need it on anymore I like this like that's not necessarily a painting but I love little bits of that kind of color showing through that I love Oh, Sheila, I'm glad you enjoyed it. So glad you enjoyed it. I mean, what more fun can there be in the morning than to get up and do this? Carve out time to paint every day and you just get better and better, a little bit at a time. To be patient, but it's well worth the, the journey. Well, it's all about the journey. That's what my post was about today. About the journey. All right, I think I need to stop fussing and sign this iris. I feel like that goes back. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think I'm fussing with it now. All right, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say it's finished when I start. Oh, well, I don't know if I like this mess I have down here. Let me. I like the looseness of it too. You know, I always say I want to keep my paintings loose and then I tend to tighten them up and I don't mean to. <clears throat> We're good. So there's my palette that I mixed and my reference image from Ellen and then my painting. <clears throat> Oh, Kim, I signed with a thing. It's called a Kemper Wipeout Tool. It's just a rubber-edged tipped um, tool, and it actually takes the paint away. Because if you work um, wet into wet, your painting's wet, so you can just do it that way, which is so much easier than signing with a paintbrush. I'm really bad at that. <clears throat> the accidental didn't. Me too. Me too. So thanks for coming, guys. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll download this and I'll put it on my website and also on my YouTube channel. If you go check out my YouTube channel, be sure to like it. I need to build that up a little bit. Um, 
Yeah, thanks, Anita. Great way to start the day. So I hope you have a wonderful Cinco de Mayo um, and get to have a margarita maybe. And we will see you again next week. Thanks for coming. Bye. Have a great day.